Okay, here we are with Michelle Arnaud. She has done a beautiful PowerPoint presentation and she will present it to you now. So you all can tune in whenever and exercise that crossword muscle. Okay, Michelle, go ahead. Thanks, Linda and everybody. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about how the puzzle began and how to be better at solving. Uh, so the, can you see the slide, Linda? Okay. Yes, yep. Uh, so the puzzle, um, well, let's go back to 1913. On December 21st, 1913, on the front page, there was a big story about a 7.2 earthquake that struck in China and it killed over a thousand people. Scores of homes were destroyed and it was considered the deadliest earthquake of the year. So that's what was going on in 1913. That same year, same month, the Mona Lisa was returned two years after it was stolen from the Louvre. Leonardo's masterpiece was recovered. Uh, it had been stolen by an Italian waiter, Vincenzo Perugia, and he had had it in his uh, hotel room in Florence when the police found it in December of 1913 and it was returned to the Louvre. He had uh, lifted it dressed as a janitor on, in 1911. So for two years, he had just coveted Mona to himself. Uh, also on the front page, there was the story of Admiral Dewey's autobiography. He was a big um, hero uh, who, um, who obviously had um, defeated the Spanish fleet. But in the very back page of the New York world in December of 1913, there was this small diamond, this puzzle. Um, it was called the word cross. It was created by British born editor, Arthur Wynne. He had designed it and put in the letters F-U-N in the top to give people the idea that they should be answering these clues, which had two numbers to indicate the beginning and end of the word. And um, he was surprised, more surprised than he ever expected to receive bags and bags of fan mail. This only appeared in the New York world on December 21st, 1913. This is what it looked like on the page. So you can see the sort of, uh, um, material that he did, how he had the hole to fill in the page. Um, and of course, he struck gold. The typesetters hated it because they had to put all these little numbers in there. Um, and just as with most inventors, he missed out on copywriting his invention. His um, bosses laughed at him when he even suggested it. Here he is, Arthur, Arthur Wynne, the man who designed the first crossword. It was called, as you saw, word cross, but the typesetters accidentally reversed the words and it became known as the crossword. So he was a resident of New Jersey and he grew up in England. And so he was very familiar with all sorts of word games. Um, he created other puzzles, but the crossword was the only one that really took off. Uh, it took 10 years before the New York World's magazine assistant, Margaret Farrer, who's pictured here, transformed the feature into a superstar. By the time I met her in 1977, she was the grand dame of crosswords. She was an Upper East Side woman who had applied the academic skills she acquired at Smith to polish the crossword to a high sheen. She set out the basic rules of the full interlock with the one sixth black squares and a symmetrical design. Her efforts paid off handsomely in 1924 when two young guys hired her to compile a collection of crossword puzzles. One of the men was turned out to be the father of Carly Simon later, Richard Simon. He signed her up, gave her 25 bucks, and she put together the book. 
By the end of 1924, Simon and Schuster had sold 350,000 copies of the collection and they were on their way to setting up the mega publishing house that we know as Simon and Schuster. So it's all built on crosswords. So in the roaring twenties, people went crazy for crosswords. They wore dresses, they had jewelry, they wrote songs and musicals and it just became crazy. Uh, everybody was doing crosswords. Um, Apparent, well, the way that the crossword worked, if you looked at the first one, it was simply a synonym matching game. So um, it would be, uh, the clue would be woody plant, the answer was tree. So uh, people were literally ripping up dictionaries to get answers. And even on trains, uh, dictionaries had been installed so that commuters could be solving crosswords while they were commuting which is something that uh, is a very popular thing even to this day. And um, author E.J. Kahn told me that, uh, the New Yorker author, that when he used to come in from Connecticut, he would start the puzzle at 125th Street and time himself to complete it by the time they pulled into Grand Central. So that's the sort of um, crazy thing that crossword solvers like to do. Uh, in 1933, a woman named Elizabeth Kingsley decided that crosswords were too boring and needed to be more literary. She developed a type of puzzle called the double cross stick, which may be another day, uh, whoever is interested in knowing how to do a double cross stick. I know Hildy is fabulous at double cross sticks. Um, we can do a session on solving together. So a double cross stick is a quote from a book and it's in a rectangular grid. And then all the clues reading down, the initial letters will spell out the name of an author and book. So this woman, Elizabeth Kingsley sat down with a Scrabble set. Well, actually not with an anagram set because Scrabble wasn't even invented yet. And she created this game and uh, she sold her puzzle. I don't have a picture of her, but anyway, um, to the Saturday Review. And she was the puzzle constructor until her death with the Saturday Review. And she would hold court. She was a widow and a teacher and people would come to her salon to watch her put together these puzzles. Um, so newspapers adopted the crossword and it is one of the reasons why people even subscribe to newspapers anymore. Um, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about the Eagle and the LA Times, which is the puzzle that uh, they uh, use. So uh, all the newspapers by the 1930s had a puzzle except for one, the New York Times. The Times thought it was beneath their dignity to have a crossword. But uh, what happened was that the publisher, Arthur Punch Sulzberger, when he realized he was buying the Herald Tribune so that he could do their puzzle, he thought maybe, maybe there was a place for the puzzle in the New York Times. And so he hired Margaret, who uh, at that point was doing the Simon and Schuster um, puzzles, books of puzzles. And I should also add that she had married John Farrer and with her earnings from uh, Simon and Schuster, they started another puzzle company called Farrer Strauss. So she really is quite a big force in the publishing world. Anyway, on February 15th, 1942, uh, she created the first crossword for the New York Times, which is pictured here. And it was supposed to be very serious and only about um, current events. And it wasn't until the 50s that um, a daily puzzle appeared in the New York Times. So when, um, when Margaret reached the age of 70, she was informed that the Times had a mandatory retirement age. And so she then um, 
had uh, had to find a, a replacement, and so she invited Will Wang, who was the um, Metro desk man, to take over the Times puzzle, and he did in 1977 until he turned 70, and then Eugene Molesca took over. Uh, Jean Molesca was um, a school administrator and he had invented the multi-word entry. Uh, he began by including the answer hard shell crab in a crossword. And Margaret thought that it was only fair to have uh, a parenthetical um, indicator to say that there were two words in the answer. But nowadays we don't do that anymore and you just have to use your judgment when you're solving to figure out if it's one or two words. Um, I earned my puzzle chops by assisting Eugene Sheffer, who was my professor at Columbia University when I was a student. And he launched the crosswords for the King Features Syndicate, which continues to this day with his name on it, the Sheffer puzzle. He told me all about the birth of the crossword, which I've just explained, and inspired me to write a book called What's New, A History of the Crossword Puzzle. So the solving strategy that everybody should um, adapt, don't start at one across, open with a missing word clue like mulligan blank, four letters, stew, S-T-E-W. Work on connecting it to the answers, Check on corners for four letter words, which is really the lingo of crosswords. Find a foreign language entry like season in Nice, which is always summer, E-T-E. -E. Scan for geographical repeaters like canal, E-R-I-E, -E, Italian wine town, A-S-T-I, or uh, the mountain range of U-R-A-L. So now I'm gonna show you the first puzzle that I wrote for Eugene Maleska, which uh, was published in 1978 when I was a student. And as you see, um, here are the components of it. Anyone can write a puzzle for the times. That's how it works. The editor then selects your puzzle and edits the clues. So here is the actual uh, grid that I put together with pencil, actually. In my day, it was pencil and paper. Um, the idea is to have a theme, but a theme is really just usually three long uh, answers. So in my case, they're horizontal across. So 20 across, you have tables, the motion, uh, 48 across, oh wait, did I'm 36 across is turn the tables and 48 across is table of contents. So my theme was table. Here are the way that you present the clues. Um, and so then the editor looks at your clues. He, it seems to always be a he nowadays solves the puzzle and edits your clues to his taste. So these were uh, the across clues. I'm looking for some repeaters. So repeaters, it's the language of puzzles. So um, you'll always see these words in every, probably every puzzle. Again, 39 across season in East, E-T-E, this is, uh, omnipresent, and it's the only uh, season that we care about. Um, so here, 63 across was the uh, missing word clue mulligan blank, stew is the answer. So th that's the sort of idea. Um, let's see, so going forward here, on the downs, two downs, St. Vincent Millay, Edna, another repeater, of course, there are very few Ednas, so she will always be our fallback. And 29 down, the London Gallery, it's always the Tate. It's the only one we care about. 
So um, the Crossroad Hall of Fame, I've just selected some random names that actually most of them appeared this week in the LA Times, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So uh, Utney, U-T-N-E, this is a magazine. I don't know if any of you have ever read it. I actually have not, but it is a repeater in puzzles because it's a wonderful combination of, uh, of um, vowels and consonants. We have the wonderful Iseo Aoki, who is a golf hall of famer. Both of his names are fabulous for puzzles. Omar Sharif, of course. We have other Omars nowadays. Elmo is mostly the Muppet. Sometimes it's the uh, Sailor Saint. Brian Eno is another repeater. Uh, we have the Finnish architect Iro Saarinen. Always, who else is named Eero? Anyone who wants to use that name can become a puzzle, uh, can enter the Hall of Fame. Earl Stanley Gardner, the author of Perry Mason, he's the only Earl with E-R-L-E, -E, Etta James, Ellie Wiesel, Edie Falco, she is forever our Edie. Now that uh, she's so famous, she's replaced Edie Sedgwick. Here are some of the faces uh, to these famous names. So uh, Eero Serenin, the architect is um, on the left and Earl Stanley Garner who created Perry Mason actually appeared as a judge in Perry Mason right there. So there are basic rules. Anyone can ask the times for the guidelines and write a puzzle. In fact, we have a young man in Otis who uh, had a puzzle this year. Uh, once your puzzle is accepted, it will uh, be assigned to a date. Um, puzzles get harder as the week goes from Monday to Saturday. Monday is the easiest. You'll get $500 for a daily, $1,500 for a Sunday. So there's some motivation to create a puzzle. And um, you see the basics. The crosswords must have black square symmetry which is 180 degree rotational symmetry. Overall interlock, you don't have just letters on their own so that you don't have unchecked squares, which actually British puzzles do have. All answers have to be three letters long, at least, and um, don't overdo the black squares. So that's uh, the basic idea of writing a crossword for the times you can buy um, software that will help you. Now the LA Times has different rules. It's more or less the same. A daily puzzle is 15 by 15 squares and uh, the Sunday is 21 by 21. But payment is quite different. For the uh, LA Times, you're only getting 85 for a daily and 250 for a Sunday. So I don't know. Pick your uh, pick the place that you like to apply to. Here are all the do's and don'ts for the LA Times. So we're going to I'm going to introduce you to the editor of the uh, LA Times in a minute. So the theme, as I showed you, a theme is basically uh, three um, longer entries, usually 15 letters each. So either usually horizontal, but sometimes down. So uh, in general, it says here, avoid cliched themes. Although if you have something fun, he will consider it. Um, daily, okay, so the three theme entries, uh, as mentioned, difficulty can range because of course the editor is going to switch and tweak and edit your clues. So he can make it harder. Don't use the two letter words, don't overuse three letter words and all of that. And proper names, again, it should be the repeater names, not names that we've never heard of. So of course, always looking for something clever. Uh, so after Margaret uh, passed away, there've been some other editors of the LA Times. And for a long time, it was this couple, they're not actually a couple partners actually, Barry and Sylvia, they collaborated, even though 
They lived uh, within driving distance of each other. They hardly ever met. They, one of them would write the uh, grids and the other one the clues. So they crafted here, it says 1400 puzzles during their um, careers. And uh, there are books of their crosswords for those who like their sort of uh, type of puzzle. So here we have the editor of today, of the LA Times today. It's, his name is Rich Norris. And I have the great pleasure of working with him once a year at the crossword contest, which typically was held in Stanford, Connecticut. But of course, due to the pandemic, now it was online this year and isn't as much fun as when we could all hang out together. Uh, and usually during the contest, what happens is uh, it's a two day affair we have about 700 contestants. Everybody is solving against the clock. Um, the last three people solve uh, on stage and then the winner wins thousands of dollars. So Rich is a very sweet and um, modest guy. And he took over the LA Times in 1999. He just started his puzzle career with Will Shorts as it says here. And um, you'll notice when you solve puzzles, you get to understand the taste of the editor and what he's looking for. So um, and I think Rich is a little bit more mainstream, I guess, than Will. Will Shorts will go, uh, he'll accept a lot of brand names and more modern, um, I guess, uh, let's say music, music. So Rich is more traditional. And again, you're not gonna make as much money, but uh, I encourage everybody who would like to try to write a puzzle. And I've always said that maybe we can all try in our group to do a puzzle together. Um, and just to end, I'm going to say, uh, we need more women in puzzles. There are a lot of women who write puzzles, but for some reason, editors are men, which doesn't make any sense because as you saw earlier, we wouldn't even be here if not for Margaret Farrer. She's the one who really put the puzzle on the map. And there are a lot of women in puzzles. So uh, if you do the puzzle in the New Yorker magazine, they're mainly written by women, but there is, um, Actually, one of my friends, Elizabeth Gorski, who writes a lot of puzzles for Hearst and for King Features and for The New Yorker, wrote to me, um, I was gonna share this and I, well, I'm, I can read it. But anyway, uh, she is very upset and she is actually boycotting the times because she feels that they're marginalizing women. So, um, Right now, uh, well, actually, Will has and Rich have put um, bylines on puzzles. And actually, today's puzzle, in, oh, I guess it doesn't show. Anyway. Hold on, I, I, can, uh, I can do that. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, so, oopsie. Because uh, you you have the blurred background. That's the oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so today we have, I was looking at the LA Times crossword in the Eagle, and it's written by Margaret Woodruff. So I'm very happy that today we can, uh, if you want to do the puzzle, which is the, um, actually tomorrow, it's the Sunday puzzle, but it's in the Saturday issue because that's how the Eagle operates. So if you want to solve it, or if you have any thoughts and you wanna share them with me, you can email me uh, either, well, you can email me directly um, at my email, which is arnotbrown at toast, T-O-S-T dot net. And we can discuss the puzzle. So I'm very happy that today a woman has written the Sunday puzzle because uh, as I said, there's a boycott now because the times has been very unfair to women. And uh, the last thing I'll say about that is that on May 5th, 
the Times announced that a woman is running a new uh, division of, of the Times called the Games Division, a black woman named Everdeen Mason. And I believe what's happened is that a lot of women have complained that Will Shorts has marginalized women constructors. And so uh, the Times took the action to hire Everdeen Mason to rectify this oversight because there are plenty of fabulous women writing crosswords. So I encourage all women who are listening to me <laughs> to try their hand at writing puzzles and um, to support, uh, you know, what this amazing uh, hobby, which really is keeping our brains sharp. You know, a lot of doctors and medical experts and, you know, say that puzzles are good for your mind and you can't prove that they're not. So um, I encourage everybody to try to do puzzles. They're not, King Features is the easiest puzzle. I believe that the LA Times is doable. It's not, um, I collected this week's puzzles just to review with anybody who wanted to, but okay, we're not gonna do that now. But if anyone ever wanted to talk about puzzles, I'm happy to do that. We can always have a coffee now that we can get together for coffee. Yeah. So and, and I think we should also it. schedule <clears throat> a real live crossword like we did last time. I have to tell you that you inspired me at that last uh, thing you did at the uh, art, the first one actually that you did at the art center to start doing crossword puzzles. That was like two, three years ago. So I do them. My partner had done them for many years and we often remark about how twisted some of these writers are, <laughs> you exactly. know, because you go, oh my God, yeah, that's so funny. Um, but it's it's wonderful. I, I it, it is a, a great um, brain exercise or two. And I love the, the perspective that you've given about, you know, women in, um, in the crossword word world um also because many women do crossword puzzles exactly. do you know if it more women than men do crossword puzzles i was curious i don't know that for a fact but i can mm. find out but yeah. um interestingly though okay when i was running puzzle magazine companies all the letters we got were from women so mm. i i think the magazine of course that's you know a while ago but um then what happened in the 1980s, this magazine um, was invented, started called Games Magazine. This is when the whole internet or the whole computer uh, culture started. And that's when the young guys got more involved and somehow took over. So if anyone remembers Dell puzzles, these are magazines of puzzles. It was all run by women, every one of these magazines. And some of these women are still around and in their 90s and they're still amazing. So, um, so, the, so at least in the past, it was all women. And then once Games Magazine and tech guys got into it, they uh, really took over unfairly, I would say. So, um, and Will Shorts and I started at, at the same time with Eugene Maleska in the 80s. But he became the brand and I just uh, worked with the women <laughs> in the female ghetto. So um, yeah, I think uh, maybe this is our moment for women to you know, try to take it back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually Hildy had said that I should, I mean, Margaret Farrer really is an amazing woman who created all the rules and made, you know, she's the one who put the Simon & Schuster book together. She's the one who created the whole culture and um, maybe just talking about her or just promoting her, you know, is, yeah, yeah. is where we should go with this. Yeah. And the double cross stick too, another puzzle that's very popular also was devised by women. So really women are the ones who created this amazing hobby that newspapers are milking, you know? <laughs> making a lot of money on sure and wow here, and i've got this uh <laughs> which i bought ages ago still it's a little bit warm today but um 
I love it. I treasure it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I feel, I don't know, today I'm on a feminist uh, rant. Well, good for you. Thank you for sharing that with uh, with all of us. And um, this is great, but we will definitely make a, a, a date uh, soon and maybe in the fall when, when the Art Center opens up to have an in-person crossword. And, I think we uh, should because we had sort of a contest and I had three winners and they won prizes. Yeah. And I think... Um, that's a great incentive. It is. It is. So, and thank you yeah. for all your inspiration. Like I said, personally for me, um, and um, and for this idea about <clears throat> recognizing, you know, how important women are to that this world and the entire world. But right today, we're talking about crossword. We'll leave. We'll keep it to there today. Thanks so much, um, Michelle. Really appreciate sure. this. Um, and yeah. uh, well, I'm going to put this up on the. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to hold on one second and goodbye, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and this will be on the website.